Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video So we haven't done this in a while and I don't know why because it's definitely something that you guys seem to enjoy But we're going to be doing a top 10 brawlers in the meta list now It's a pretty fresh meta and it's a little bit wild There are a lot of pretty strong brawlers and there's only really one brawler That's really just you know so far beyond everyone else that it's unfair but with that being said, let's hop into the list and let's show you guys the top 10 brawlers in Brawl Stars. So our honorable mention here is going to be Stu. Now there are 11 brawlers that I think are just kind of a tier above everyone else in the game. And this is one of them. Now the thing with Stu is it kind of gets countered by a lot now and tanks are becoming a little bit more meta. And with tanks being meta, Stu just isn't really as good as the DPS isn't you know, as high as you'd want it to be. Now, a Stu can definitely beat a tank in a 1v1. As you guys can see, I should be beating this Daryl, though I do get snapped by this Nani. Um, but if you're facing like triple tank or double tank Poco, it's just not a winning recipe. Stu is not something that's too good. Plus, there are other counters, like some throwers can really annoy Stu, or a Surge can annoy Stu, or the dog. You guys know who I'm calling, by the way, the dog Ruffs. We, we always call it the dog can really annoy Stu. There's just a lot of things that Stu is not very good into, but there are a lot of brawlers that Stu just absolutely dominates. And so for that reason, we're going to be giving Stu the honorable mention, but it is not going to be in our top 10. So let's move into our top 10 and let's get going. So coming in at number 10, we have Leon. Now Leon is just a really good brawler. He's getting to a lot of different things, which makes it a really nice pick. Plus the gadget is really really strong you just cover a very large area on the map it's not overly large but it's about the size of a hot zone maybe a little bit bigger and you can just cover the entire thing with invisibility and it's constant invisibility it's not like it ticks down it's not like it goes away it's just there until the other team breaks so if you have control which is easy to get when you have that it's just basically a free win i don't know what that mortis is doing over there on that side i guess he already gave up on six gems into the game um but leon really good brawler really round well rounded both gadgets are pretty good, both star powers are pretty good, and it's also a pretty good free-to-play brawler, so all around it's just awesome, and this is going to be our number 10 spot. So coming in at number 9, we have Griff. Now, Griff is a really strong brawler, and it's actually been quite slept on for a good amount of time. It's not been buffed, it's not been nerfed, it's stayed the same as it always has, but no one, I think, realized how strong Griff actually is. So Griff's super, first off, is one of the best supers in the game, hands down. I want to put it in the same area as you have, like, Jean and Tara. It's not necessarily all the way up there, but the game-changing ability is definitely there with Griff's super. It completely, completely counters any tanks. Any tank walks into the Griff super, and it just does way too much damage. It kills them so fast. But it's also good against every other brawler. It has really good spreads, and it has really good range. You can hit a lot of different targets with this. It's just ridiculously strong, does a lot of damage, is easy to hit. And then on top of that, the gadget, although it doesn't seem, you know, too broken or isn't doing much damage or really anything, it's actually very, very strong because you can open up the map and just make it however you like. If you're laning a tank, perfect. Just open it up and spray the tanks. If you're facing range, don't open it up and use the walls to your advantage. It helps you win whatever matchup you're in. It's just really good, and then as you guys can see, when the walls break here in overtime, the chaining super ability is just, like, ridiculous. I use one super, they're both half HP, I get my super back, I use it again. It's just so ridiculously strong, and it also does damage when it comes back. It's just way too good. Now, this brawler's been slept on, but it's not necessarily the most OP thing in the game because it gets countered by a lot of the very meta brawlers, which we're going to go into a little bit later. But that's going to be our number 8 brawler, or sorry, no, our number 9 brawler. So let's keep going and show you guys number 8. So coming in at number 8, we have Jackie. Now, Jackie was a little bit higher in the meta, but she did recently get nerfed, which kind of sucks because seeing Jackie good was awesome. Um, and it's still good, but the nerf, you know, it's just a little bit of a nerf, but it moved her down quite a bit. Um, she was probably top 3 or even maybe top 2 before that, but it's still a very very good brawler as you guys can see Stu can't really do anything into it which is one of the things i was talking about earlier into tanks Stu just has a little bit of a hard time doesn't have necessarily the amount of dps and able to take one out and it's just super hard to take out a jackie because what are you going to do you have to break a wall because i'm just hiding behind this wall and if anyone goes near me it's just an insta kill very strong brawler i'm interested to see how they're going to nerf it because it's just I don't know, it's a really good tank, 
Now, its only weakness is just about every other tank beats Jackie, unless you have Foco Heals. If Foco Heals are involved, this is a completely different story, but just tank versus tank, basically every tank in the game defeats Jackie. So Jackie is going to be in our number eight spot, but this is a really good brawler, and I'm very happy that Jackie is in the meta because it was out of the meta for a very long time. So let's hop into number seven and let's keep going. So coming in at number seven, we have Crow. And now Crow is actually a very, very good brawler and is extremely slept on. Now the thing that makes Crow so good is basically nothing in this game counters Crow. And when I say nothing, I literally mean nothing. Tanks, Crow just slowly chips down. Throwers, Crow just jumps on. Range Crow just jumps on. And then on top of that, I don't know why this hasn't been nerfed yet. But the Crow Slows are so good. The gadget is so strong. It's absolutely ridiculous. If you guys have this gadget, it's just... It's unreal. It's so good into everything. There's basically no brawler in the game that Crow gets countered by. Besides maybe like a Piper or a Byron before you get your super. But once you get your super, your super you just jump on them and it's a free win. Even Spike is one of the harder lanes to get as a Crow. But you guys can see I'm doing a perfectly fine job. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Um, it's just a really good brawler. It's good into everything. Both gadgets are good in different situations. Both star powers are good in different situations. And it's also a pretty good free-to-play brawler. Its gadget is probably top three gadgets in the game. I made a gadget video recently. I know I included this one in the top five. I don't know if I necessarily put a top three, but you guys can see they're double slowed. Like, what are they supposed to do? They can't walk around. They can't shoot anything. And it's just a free win, basically, when you get, like, a double or triple slow. So this is going to be our number seven brawler, I believe. So let's hop into number six, and let's show you guys what it is. So coming in at number six, we have Ash. Now, Ash is actually sneakily very broken if you have a poco or a byron matched with your ash it is one of the most broken things in the game if not the most broken thing in the game what makes it so broken is that with ash you're kind of making a trade-off every time you get hit you're gaining rage so you're getting stronger as a brawler but you're also losing hp and if you want to use your gadget to get your hp back sure you can do that but at the same time that's when you're losing your rage but when you have a healer on your team, you can get that rage. You can constantly be getting that rage and becoming stronger while also getting healed by your team. If Genie could just hit a heal, which he finally hit one. But if Genie just heals me, or if my Byron heals me, or my Poco, or whatever I have, and I just walk in a straight line and actually figure out how to juke shots, this is the most broken thing in the game. There is no way of taking it out. It's so ridiculously strong. Even when you have triple counter, you can basically... Or when you get triple countered, you can still win. It's just such an unreal good brawler. But only when you have a healer. If you don't have a healer healing you, I mean, it's still pretty good. It's all right. It's not the best thing in the game. I probably wouldn't even put it top 10. I'd probably put it borderline top 10. But either way, once you have a match with this healer, it is broken. So if you're ever playing Ash, try and get a healer on your team. Try and play with a Byron or a Poco, something like that. Because once you get that rage and you have full HP, there is no way... You are going to be losing the games, especially if you don't get countered. So this is going to be our number six. Let's move into number five. I'll show you guys what it is. So coming in at number five, we have Byron. Now, Byron, honestly, I might be underrating it a little bit. Because when I watch other regions, for example, like EU or Asia, I see a lot of Byron. Now, NA has been starting to use a little bit more Byron. We haven't been using it as much as the other regions. But it is such a good brawler. The value you get from playing Byron is just so good. And remember, every shot you're hitting is like 1.5 or 1.6 thousand heal, 1.5 or like one point, I don't know the exact number, 1.5 or 1.6 thousand damage every single time you hit a shot. And then if you're low, you can just pop your gadget and get right back to full HP. It's a really good brawler. Both star powers are good. Both gadgets are good. It's also a good free-to-play brawler. It's good across a lot of different modes. Now, the only issue with this brawler is I wouldn't necessarily just think it's strong alone. For example, Bell in the last meta was good into everything. Byron is not good into everything. If you're facing a Mortis, if you're facing a Buzz, if you're facing something that counters you, you can get very screwed by the Byron. It's very possible you can get hard countered. So this is why Byron, I would leave it at five because the rest of the brawlers on my list don't really get countered by too many things outside of one, um, but Byron does. So this is why we're going to have it at number five. Still top five, which is really good for any brawler considering there's 51 brawlers in the game. But let's move into the top four and show you guys what it is. Now coming in at number four, we have Buzz. Now I feel like every region 
besides NA, which is very opposite from the Byron that we were talking about earlier, extremely underrates Buzz. Now, Buzz does have its counters. For example, a Gene Knockback, a Sandy Stun. There are a lot of things that hard counter Buzz. But if you don't face those hard counters, it's like an automatic win. There's just no way of losing the game. If you're facing like a Mortis, a Byron, and a Dino, which are just three brawlers I see on my screen, or this 8-bit, or this spike, like there's just, all, all the brawlers on the screen right now don't counter Buzz. Buzz is very good into, it's basically a free kill every single time you get on, you dash onto someone with every brawler that is. It's not just with the brawlers on the screen, it's even the brawlers that counter like Sandy, Jean. If you can grapple onto them, it's a free kill every single time. The issue is the knockback doesn't allow that. You can do wild stuff like that with Buzz like I just did. It's just a really good brawler. There's a lot of opportunity with it. And I think it's very underrated. Now, the reason we have it at number four is yes, it does get countered. It's not like Bell or it's not like the three brawlers at the top of this list that basically don't get countered by anything in the game. It's good, but it has counters. If you're not facing counters, it's probably the most explosive brawler in the game by just like the amount of damage you can do and the amount of just impact you have on the game is ridiculous with Buzz. But this is going to be our number four brawler because of all the counters it has. Let's move into our top three, our elite three, and show you guys what it is. So coming in at number three, we're going to have Sandy. Now, Sandy is just a ridiculous brawler. I think Sandy needs some form of a nerf because it's just way too good. The fact, I know this is kind of normal to us now, but the fact that Sandy can stun is a really weird thought. If you guys have been playing ever since beta, you know, there's been a lot of changes in this game, but Sandy having a stun is definitely not something that anyone thought would happen. It just stops a lot of scenarios. Um, it allows you to score. There's so many good things about the stun. And then on top of that, the super is also one of the most broken supers in the game. And then on top of that, it just doesn't really have any hard counters. Nothing is too good into it. You guys are going to see I'm going to try a fancy trick shot here. I forgot Frank can just, you know, say no to the gadget, but it doesn't matter because Sandy is so good. I have another stun. I can just score at will, basically. It's such a good brawler. It doesn't really have any counters. The super is amazing. The gadget is amazing. It needs some nerf because it's just way too good. But this is going to be our number three brawler. Let's move into number two, show you guys what it is. Coming in at number two, we have Rico. Now, Rico is a very fun brawler and a very good brawler. And I'm honestly happy that this is the second best brawler in the game. Now, obviously, when things are overpowered, they're always going to be annoying. Like, facing a Rico is pretty annoying. But at the same time, would I rather Rico be the second best brawler in the game or Amber be the second best brawler in the game? I think majority of the players in this game would, would say we would rather have Rico be the top brawler. It's just a fun brawler. It's a skilled brawler. And it's always been a good brawler, but it's always lacked HP. It's always lacked movement. Now it has speed. Look at this absolute snipe from the Shelly, by the way. But it, it now has speed if you want speed. It adds a super bounty if you want added damage. And the gadget just, just like that, regens your HP. It's crazy how fast you can get to full HP. It's a little bit broken. They have nerfed it. They should probably nerf it a little bit more. But I love that Rico's number two. It's really fun. I think a lot of people are having fun with Rico being the second best brawler in the game. But with that being said, we're going to move on to number one, the easily best brawler in the game right now i think any of you guys are going to be able to guess it by you know just watching any of my last videos of the you know competitive matches and seeing what's going on i feel like you guys are gonna have a pretty good idea of what number one is so let's hop into it and show you guys what it is so going into spot number one this one is so obvious we're going to have brock now brock that's it's not you know crazy there's been a lot more crazy brawlers a lot more strong brawlers than brock but right now brock is just the easy 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 choice for the number one brawler in the game it's just so ridiculously strong it does a lot of damage it's good into range good into mid really good into mid range good into tanks it's just good into everything can break walls with its super and its gadget has extremely large of a hitbox so it is basically impossible if you are good at the game to miss brock shots it's actually pretty crazy how hard it is to miss brock shots but it's just easily the best in the game again very few counters the only thing i'd say would counter it is a good piper or something like that it's just such a good brawler so so ridiculously strong you guys can, it can even shoot through walls like why can brock shoot through walls i don't know but this is just easily the best brawler in the game 
You guys can see I'm kind of just hitting every shot. Now I'm getting a little overexcited trying to score the goal, but every single shot is being hit. Basically impossible to miss. And both star powers are good. Both gadgets are good. Everything about the brawler is good, and that's things that we like to look for. Um, but yeah, this is going to be our number one brawler in this current meta. Let me know if you guys agree with my list. If you don't, let me know what additions or things that you would change with the list or if you would change maybe the order of it. That's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that. But I will see you guys again tomorrow. Maybe. I'm trying to be more consistent. But that's going to be it for me today. See you guys soon. Peace.